Ray-finned fish are a diverse group of aquatic vertebrates, they are characterized by their fins, which are supported by bony rays, giving them a delicate, fan-like appearance. With over 30,000 known species, ray-finned fish make up the largest class of vertebrates on Earth. They inhabit a wide range of aquatic environments, including freshwater, marine, and even brackish habitats. They first appeared in the fossil record during the Silurian period, around 430 million years ago, making them one of the oldest and most successful groups of vertebrates on Earth. Like insects, they are the primary food source for most aquatic organisms, and their decline is a threat to the animals that depend on them. Andreolepis had a streamlined body covered in scales, with well-developed pectoral fins located towards the front of its body and smaller pelvic fins closer to the abdomen. The tail was likely heterocircle, with the upper lobe larger than the lower lobe, aiding in swimming. It had a lower jaw with tooth-bearing bones, indicating it was a predatory fish that likely fed on other aquatic organisms. Teraceous contributes to our understanding of ray-finned fish diversity and adaptations during the Carboniferous period. Its dental morphology and unique characteristics offer insights into its potential ecological niche and feeding behavior. Saurichthys had well-developed pectoral and pelvic fins, allowing for precise maneuverability in water. Its powerful caudal fin provided propulsion for fast swimming and efficient hunting. It was a carnivorous fish and a swift predator. It had numerous sharp teeth in its jaws, which were suited for catching and gripping prey. It likely fed on smaller fish and other aquatic organisms. Their widespread distribution suggests they were successful and adaptable predators in various aquatic environments. Semionotus had a streamlined body shape and was covered in thick, bony scales called ganoid scales. These scales provided protection against predators and environmental hazards. It had well-developed pectoral and pelvic fins, which aided in maneuverability and stability while swimming. Its dorsal fin was located towards the back of the body. The presence of these fins indicates that Semionotus was an agile swimmer. Aspidorhynchus was a slender, fast-swimming fish, 60 centimeters long, with tooth-lined, elongated jaws. It also had heavy scales and a symmetrical tail. The upper jaw was longer than the lower jaw, ending in a toothless spike. Rhombichthys was a rather unusual-looking elamichthyiform from the mid-Cretaceous. Living in shallow reef and lagoon waters covering what is now the West Bank in the Middle East, it had a tall narrow dorsal fin along with incredibly elongated belly scuts that gave its body a rhombus-like profile. Flabby whalefish have elongated bodies with soft, flabby flesh, which gives them their name. They have large heads, small eyes, and a small mouth with sharp teeth. Like many deep-sea fishes, it is thought to undergo nightly vertical migrations, they feed within the upper 700m of the water column by starlight and retreat back to the abyssal depths by daybreak. Judging by the latest studies, the younger fish seem to frequent shallower water more than the adults do. Lead Sichthys is considered one of the largest fish that ever lived, it was estimated to reach lengths of up to 16 meters it had a streamlined body shape and a large, gaping mouth with numerous small teeth arranged in rows, indicating it was likely a filter feeder. It likely fed on tiny planktonic organisms by swimming with its mouth wide open and filtering the water to capture its food. 
Its large size and open mouth feeding strategy allowed it to consume vast amounts of plankton in a single pass. Its enormous size and filter feeding adaptations demonstrate the incredible adaptations and evolutionary success of prehistoric fish. In its general body plan, Protosferina resembled a modern sailfish, though it was smaller with a shorter rostrum, was somewhat less hydrodynamic, and adults possessed large blade-like teeth. It was a carnivorous fish and a skilled predator. Its sharp teeth and streamlined body allowed it to swiftly chase and capture its prey. It likely fed on smaller fish and other aquatic organisms. Chirolepes had a streamlined body with small, triangular ganoid scales similar to those of the Acanthodiae. These scales had a basic structure typical of many early osteichthians, with a superficial of ganoin overlying dentine, and a basal plate of bone. It had well-developed fins which gave it speed and stability, and was probably an active predator. Based on the size of its eyes, it hunted by sight. The earliest sturgeon fossils date to the late Cretaceous, they are long-lived, late-maturing fishes with distinctive characteristics, such as a heterocircle caudal fin similar to those of sharks, and an elongated, spindle-like body that is smooth-skinned, scaleless, and armored with five lateral rows of bony plates called scuts. Sturgeons are primarily benthic feeders, with a diet of shellfish, crustaceans, and small fish. The sturgeon's electroreceptors are located on the head and are sensitive to weak electric fields generated by other animals or geoelectric sources. Gyratus had a disc-shaped body with a flattened profile. Its body was covered in thick, ganoid scales, which provided protection. It had a relatively small mouth located on the underside of its head. One of its most distinctive features is its dental structure. It had a unique grinding dentition composed of rounded teeth with ridges and grooves. These teeth were well suited for crushing and grinding hard-shelled prey such as mollusks and crustaceans. Sarasalmamus lived in what is now Morocco during the late Paleocene. It had sharp flesh-cutting teeth similar to those of modern piranha, but with a surprising evolutionary twist. Unlike any other known ray-finned fish, its teeth were true shearing carnassial anchored into bony sockets, with new replacement teeth forming directly below each current tooth, a very specific arrangement of features previously only known in mammals. Hensidon superficially resembled a marine angelfish with a massive head, and a very spiny pectoral girdle. Different specimens have different arrangements of the horn-like frontal spines. One form has the horns arranged as a double prong, assumed to be the male, and the other form, assumed to be the female, having the horns one after the other, like those of a rhinoceros. Rostropycnotus was one of the especially odd-looking forms, known from the mid-Cretaceous of Lebanon. It would have been a slow swimmer, relying on its spikiness to deter larger predators, and it's currently unclear what it ate with its unusual spiny snout. Many other pycnodonts had mouths full of round crushing teeth, but Rostropycnotus jaws seem to have been mostly toothless, however, it could have fed on corals. The strong and pointed dentition suggests that Dipedium was durophagus, feeding on hard-shelled invertebrates, like mussels and sea urchins. It had a deep, laterally compressed body with a distinctive triangular shape. It had large, round scales that covered its body. 
Inhabiting both freshwater lakes and shallow seas, Lepidotes was typically about 30 centimeters long. The body was covered with thick, enameled scales. It was one of the earliest fish in which the upper jawbones were no longer attached to the jugal bone. This allowed the jaws to be stretched into a tube so that the fish could suck in prey from a greater distance than in previous species. This system is still seen in some modern fish, such as carp. Alligator gar are relatively passive, seemingly sluggish solitary fish, but voracious ambush predators. They are opportunistic night predators and are primarily piscivores, but they also ambush and eat waterfowl, turtles, and small mammals that may be floating on the surface. As with most ancestral species, alligator gars are long-lived, and sexually late maturing. Most females do not reach sexual maturity until after their first decade of life, while males reach sexual maturity in half that time. The conditions must be precise for a successful spawning to occur.